it going everyone? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. Today I've got Josh from Cask Strength with us and he is a little bit, when I say a little bit, I don't mean a little bit, I mean a lot, <laughs> of a whiskey connoisseur. So today he's going to walk us through a few things, some definitions between different types of whiskies that people always get wrong. And then we've got some awesome Texas. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Brought along a few Texas whiskeys uh, with me today. Wanted to talk about some definitions of different whiskey yeah. types. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think probably what to start with is bourbon, right? I mean, that's what the United States is mostly known for. It's kind of the native spirit. Kind of the gold uh, standard, right? Yep. And so, well, so people think. Without getting <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It depends on who you ask. Yeah. Um, yeah. Depending on um, the type of bourbon you're talking about, there's a lot of minutia to do with uh, how long it's been aged and and etc. First thing to know is that bourbon can be made anywhere in the United States. Right, doesn't have to be in just Kentucky. Which or, is a big misconception, right? Absolutely, a lot of people think that. Absolutely. So the legal yeah. definition is anywhere in the U.S. can produce bourbon. It has to be at least 51% corn in the mash bill. Mm -hmm. The rest of that percentage, all the way up to 100, can be made of other grains like barley, wheat, rye, etc. Those are the common ones. Yep. Um, but not limited to those, right? Not limited if you to want those. To use rice yeah. or. Whatever. Oats. Exactly. There's uh, there's a few distilleries out there. There's uh, there's some folks in Texas using some uh, some interesting different grains and stuff like that, like rice, for example. But for the most part, you're talking about those four. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, the other main thing has to be aged in new oak barrels that have been charred on the inside. Okay. Right. And that's not flexible at all, is it? No, no. If it yeah. goes into a used oak barrel, uh, for example, if you used a bourbon mash bill and put it in a used oak barrel, that'd be classified as a corn whiskey instead. Okay. So. And U.S. oak? It doesn't have to be American oak per se. Oh, interesting. That, yeah. I've learned something already. I yeah. thought it had to be U.S. oak. New charred oak containers. Oh, it doesn't even have to be barrels, does it? It's right, they don't really... Like cubes or... Right, they don't really define what barrel actually means. So it doesn't actually have to be U.S. oak, right? U.S. white oak. Right. So the the actual uh, legal definition that they give is is it has to be new charred oak containers. Now, oh. that's barrels, basically everywhere, yeah. right? <laughs> but technically, I guess you could make a, an oak box and, and call it bourbon, right? But, right. Um, and, it, and am I right in saying that pretty much as long as it touches that container for any length of time? Correct. It's uh, aged in? Yes, yes. Uh, they can technically call it bourbon. Uh, there's, uh, it, there are different classifications of bourbon, such as straight bourbon or bottled and bond that do have okay, length right. of time aging requirements, but there's companies like Hudson out of New York makes a baby bourbon that's aged for a, a really, really short time. It's a couple right. of months or something like that. I think. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, and you know, they're doing interesting stuff up there, so that's a creative spin on it where most people try and age it for longer. They're like, let's just age it for a short time, see what happens. Cool. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's kind of the, the nuts and bolts of it. If you want to dig into bottled and bond, and, and there's proof requirements for that and age requirements for that. Uh, has to be stored in a government uh, supervised warehouse, etc. But that's kind of the basics of, of what it requ what bourbon requires. Cool. What well, do you want to move on to some of the other popular whiskeys? Sure, sure. Uh, rye, I think, would probably be rye whiskey would be yeah. uh, the, the next most common. A lot of those requirements are the same uh, as bourbon, but instead of being corn based, you're talking about it being 51% rye based, up to okay. uh, up to 100% rye. Wow. Right? All right. Uh, in the case of like Balcones rye, they, they are 100% rye, but that it sort of depends on the distillery. I would love to see them mash down set up. <laughs> <laughs> rye is a pig. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I guess not a whole lot worse than corn though, so, or actually not. But. To me, uh, to me the most interesting one is actually American single malt. Yeah, so, right. You know, we're, we're used to single malt having a, sort of that Scottish definition, 100% malted barley, used, uh, used oak containers, uh, used oak barrels, mm -hmm. um, and, and three years and a day, I think, is the, the age requirement, right, right? right? We don't have quite those same requirements in the States. It doesn't actually have to be 100% uh, malted barley, although usually most of your major single malts in America are okay, 100%. So is anything else fair game? Yeah, it, it can be added in, uh, you know, other grains can be added in there. So, uh, it's not a requirement, but generally people like Balcones, there's Stranahan's out of Colorado, uh, Westland up in uh, Seattle, those guys, they do according to the Scottish tradition. Right, right? They, they follow that tradition, even though they don't have to, they think it's 
Exactly, exactly. Now, the used oak container, the used oak barrel that uh, the Scotch distilleries use, in America we can do either or. We can use new uh, oak, right. we can age something in used oak. Yeah. Uh, so a, a lot of the components of the Balcone single malt, like the one that I brought here today, mm -hmm. uh, they do use a lot of new oak, and then in a different expression they'll use used oak. So right, they can get right, different right, flavor right. profiles with the same base spirit. It's pretty cool having that flexibility. Yeah. And I think the craft movement is trying to push towards that, right? They want to be able to experiment. They want to be able to do different things. Yep, and that's something I've, I've talked to folks like, uh, I talked to a gentleman from Brooklady mm. one time, and he uh, he said, well, we, we try other things. We have these experiments. We're making a rye whiskey in Scotland on Isla. <laughs> That right? is cool. Which is super, <laughs> is really cool. Which is super interesting, but they can't call it Scotch whiskey. Yeah. Right? It wouldn't qualify. Yeah. They're they're kind of handcuffed by the regulations where, you know, the way it works here for single malt, they're allowed a little more creativity. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, uh, what's after single malt? The, you know, spirit? the bourbon, rye, single malts, uh, and by far the bourbon and rye are the you know the most popular and the most prevalent here, but. Uh, you do have some other categories uh, that, that some of the just oddball aged spirits fall into. There's right. distilled spirit specialty, okay. which is like what I this... I do not know about that. It kind, about that. It's kind of an all-encompassing, if you made something that doesn't quite qualify as bourbon, doesn't oh, quite okay. qualify right. as rye, isn't a single malt, but it is an aged spirit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know. It goes into that. Yeah, so like Iron Root makes something called Starka, which was started off as a gin, but never really made it to being a gin, and then they barrel aged it, and it's just this kind of oddball thing. Or the Rumble I have here today. Yeah, uh, that's, I'm excited to try that. That that's falls exciting. underneath that, because it's, it's not a whiskey, because it's not entirely made from grain. Oh, I feel like we have to talk Tennessee whiskey. Tennessee whiskey, yeah. Yeah, tell me about that. Tennessee whiskey is technically the same as bourbon, except for it undergoes the Lincoln County uh, process. And exactly how different distilleries do that varies a little bit, but it's essentially a charcoal filtering process okay. that they run the whiskey through. So it meets all those same requirements, could technically be called bourbon. And in fact, there's a couple of uh, Tennessee whiskey distilleries. I think Pritchard's, for okay. example, was grandfathered in they don't actually do the charcoal filtering, but before they made that law, they what? were calling themselves Tennessee whiskey. And that's still able to do so. Yeah, so they you huh. know, they said, hey, we don't want to have to change our whole branding, our whole labels and everything. Wow. So there, there's a few exceptions to that rule out on the market, but for the most part, people recognize Tennessee whiskey as involving the charcoal filtering. Yeah, right. Awesome. Oh, thanks for that, man. That is a minefield. <laughs> for anyone that's not in America, let alone people that aren't into whiskey, uh, there's so many misconceptions, so thank you for clearing that up. For I mean, I'm, I'm still learning all the crazy <laughs> details about the legal requirements and stuff too, so yeah. yeah. Pretty cool. Before we get stuck into this, guys, I want to get Josh to introduce himself a little bit more and give a little bit of a spiel about uh, your YouTube channel, because I think you guys should check it out. Go over and check that out as well. So, yeah, so my name's Josh Galladay. I uh, am part of a whiskey-related YouTube channel called Cast Strength. Uh, so youtube.com slash cast strength. There's facebook.com slash the cast strength. Right. And uh, so it's myself. Uh, and two gentlemen out of Canada, uh, my friends Vito and Brad, they're out of Ottawa and Toronto. So Totally cool guys, by the way. Absolutely, yeah. good friends of mine. Uh, we do live streams every other week where we just hang out, talk, joke around, drink some whiskey. Uh, and then we've been doing uh, whiskey reviews. Uh, myself, my wife Gretchen, we've been doing on-site visits to Texas whiskey distilleries. Uh, we have you know, videos from Iron Root. We've got another one coming out from Andalusia Whiskey Company. We've been talking about Balcones, about going up there and interviewing those guys. So. Uh, we're doing a lot of cool stuff here, and uh, Vito and Brad have some Canadian things going on, so it's kind of an interesting perspective, you know, three different guys in three different cities and two yeah. different countries. Yeah, so. yeah, and it is cool, guys. The, the three of them work well together, and it is cool they have three different perspectives, sharing things, and as you can tell, these guys, they know this stuff. So if you're into whiskey, make sure you check their channel out. Yeah, cheers. Oh, before we get stuck in, guys, I need to do something really important. I need to thank these people over here. These are the Patreons for Still It Right Now. There is no way, absolutely no way, I'd be here in Austin, Texas right now without these people tasting these awesome whiskeys. Hanging out with this dude here and Gretchen behind the camera over here. Say hi, Gretchen. Hi. There you go. So thanks heaps. Thank you so much, guys. I cannot do this without you. But uh, the other thing that you're really passionate about is specifically 
Texas spirits. Right? Absolutely, yeah. I'm, I'm a huge Texas whiskey fan, as you can see. <laughs> yeah. uh, Texas Whiskey Trail, uh, we're uh, kind of helping represent them in the Texas Whiskey Association. So I brought a few things here with me today from Iron Root Republic Distillery. They're out of Denison, Texas, up north, just north of Dallas. Cool. I've got a whiskey and a non-whiskey that I thought you might be interested in, that rumble, uh, from Balcones Distillery out of Waco. And then Andalusia, not too far from where we are here in Austin today, uh, they're in Blanco, Texas. So I brought their single malt that I thought was really unique uh, that you might be interested in. That one is hardwood smoked. So instead oh. of being peat smoked like a scotch, they treat that like you would a Texas brisket. <laughs> brisket whiskey, I can get on board with that. Uh huh, uh huh. Pretty cool. What does it smoke with? So whiskey? It's or? smoked with, so they smoke their uh, malted barley on site. Right. Okay. Uh, they're smoking it with oak, apple, and mesquite wood. Ooh. Okay. Right. So a combination of those three, and this particular bottle was a distillery exclusive. That's that's something that's pretty cool. If you go and visit the distilleries in Texas here, they'll do a lot of exclusive bottlings where you know this one's a rum cask finished version that oh, you wow. can't get in stores. You that's have to, pretty cool. You have to go to the distillery to get it. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so which one do you want to try first? I, I would kind of suggest maybe starting with the bourbon. That's probably yeah, the Yeah, it's not standard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's kind of the standard. I've heard a lot about Iron Root. Mm -hmm. I, I was hoping to go and see them, but they're just a little bit too far out of town me, to fit into the schedule. Let me, <laughs> let me tell you, man, nothing in Texas is close. You yeah. have to try. <laughs> I was just up uh, and went and saw these guys last week, uh, Robert and Jonathan Licorice, and uh, they call uh, their mothers heavily involved in the distillery, Marshall. Really? Yeah, Marshall That's Licorice. That's a good story. They refer to her as the mother of Texas whiskey. So, oh. so get to try a little bit of this. They have two bourbons that are kind of easy. Yeah, <laughs> they're kind of easy to find here in the states. They sell them at Total Wine Stores. Uh, this is the somewhat spicier, higher rye bourbon, and then they, the, the Promethean, and they have the Harbinger bourbons a little sweeter. Okay. So, and I know you had a little bit of Texas whiskey last night. I'm sure, but. I did. It's maybe I did not have this. Yeah, I didn't have any iron root actually. Okay, okay, so first time. Curious what you think. That is different, man. Yeah. So That's really unique. What's what's a bourbon that comes to your mind, something that you're familiar with, you've had before, you know, you know what to expect? Uh like Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark, sure. Yeah. Like a weeded bourbon, yeah. Which is much more um candy corn, mm -hmm. I guess, than this. This is much it's sweet, but but delicately sweet, I guess. It's not right. like cranking vanilla and, and um, butterscotch over your head. Right, it's not, it's not like uh, an overly sweet dessert type whiskey. No. It has enough kind of spice and dryness to kind of balance out the a sweetness. Bit of, a little bit of coffee. Mm. And generally what you're gonna see in Texas is that because of the climate that, that we have here, the environment, stuff ages, or, well, matures more quickly. Age always happens in the same yeah. way. <laughs> it matures more quickly. You're going to get a little different result than you're going to get in Kentucky or, or anywhere else, right? Yeah. We have a unique environment down here because of the heat and everything else. So uh, this guy is actually 16 months old. Wow. So in 16 months. So in bourbon terms, that's not terribly old. You know, you see something Especially like... not in any other spirits, dudes. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. 16 months. But uh, you get a, a, an incredible amount of flavor and a unique flavor profile, even in that relatively short time. Oh, it lives up to the nose, eh? Mm-hmm. Definitely some spice on the back end. Yeah, the rye really comes through uh, for me on this one. A little bit of pepper, almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I said, this is definitely the spicier of the two bourbons that mm, they... Yum. Yum. And it starts sweet, but dries out mm -hmm. really quickly. Exactly. It leaves your mouth... Dry, almost like champagne. And there's a length like, to it too. Like it, it doesn't. Yeah, it lingers. Yeah, it doesn't go away. It, it's the spice lingers. Mm-hmm. Mm, yum. Exactly. So that's one of my favorites. I'm I'm really enjoying what they're doing, and I actually have a have a single barrel pick that I've done with them. They'll be coming out here, getting bottled in the next few weeks. So that's pretty cool, man. That should be. I'll fun. have to hear about that when it happens. Yeah. There's something nostalgic about this, and I don't, I can't put my finger on the flavor, but it reminds me of our grandmother. Isn't it? Those are the, <laughs> I can't figure out what it is. Aren't those the coolest whiskey experiences yeah, though, right? Yeah, they really are. All you taste something, you smell something, and you actually think, is that, what's that, Grandma's yeah. house? <laughs> yeah. What? yeah, what is this? Grandma did not drink at all. She was a total teetotaler. <laughs> so it's not that my Nana was a drunk. <laughs> so that was amazing. I don't know how it's going to get better from there, but um, 
Just so we can do. Well, you know, I think that's one of the best Texas bourbons. Also, uh, you know, if you're here uh, for a few days, try out Garrison Brothers as well. Yeah. I, 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 you know. I had to pick one Bourbon to bring today, bourbon-wise, so I picked the Iron Rue, but Garrison's uh, kind of one of the quintessential Texas bourbons. But if I'm going to talk about, for me, the, the, just kind of the staple, what defines Texas whiskey more than anything, it's Balcone single malt, just for my personal preference. Now, they sell the regular single malt, uh, you know, all over the world even. You can get it in Europe. And, and, oh, really? And, mm -hmm, That's yeah, cool. Through Master of Malt and, and uh, you know, sell it through most states here. Mm -hmm. But this particular one was only available at the distillery. This was last year's staff selection Ooh. single barrel. And it, that is a cool label, too. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah that's dope. Um, so this was out of the Balcone staff last year. They all picked, voted on their favorite barrel and bottled it and here it is so I, that's something special man i this is my first time opening this i've had samples of it before and i'm blown away by it oh so, really yeah so i decided to bring it here so you can oh, try it oh thank you for sharing man yeah absolutely. And thank you for sharing phil with everyone watching yeah let's do small pause we have to drive uh, off to still Austin after this, so we're um, we're trying to take it easy. Too. Many whiskey things are happening. Today. Yeah, there's a lot of whiskey things going down. <laughs> so again, this is going to be uh, the 100% malted barley. They use Golden Promise barley, Dude. which is that is not the cheapest barley you can get. That's no. It, so the home distillers will know that Golden Promise is totally a it's like a British thing, really, mm -hmm. I guess, and it has an amazing flavor. It's a base malt, so you know you can use it it's got a great diastatic power uh but it does have this awesome kind of biscuity like british biscuits i know this is a thing over here. <laughs> biscuits. i apologize yeah. especially to the <laughs> biscuits are big fluffy things that you put sausage scones. gravy in they're called scones <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's always the, the age old battle biscuits versus cookies versus scones but this is amazing this Isn't is like it? coffee and cream yeah, like a dark caramel, coffee, yeah. creamy. Wow. If I remember correctly, so uh, Balcones uses a bunch of different barrels. They use American oak, they use Hungarian oak, European really? oak, French oak, and so they'll put the same spirit in all of these different barrels. So they mess around with yeah. Yep. And I believe if that I, is the spirit of chasing the craft, guys. That's absolutely, awesome. <laughs> absolutely. They're, that's what I love about them in particular. They're so creative and they're just doing things entirely differently than so many other distilleries yeah, you know it's pretty cool they do such a wide range of stuff so there's something almost rum like about that there's like an estery banana -y thing you know it's right funny, at the end of the nose it's funny that you say that i'm of the opinion that no matter what the balconius whiskey is if it's the single malt if it's the rye if it's their bourbon even the non-whiskey the rumble here there's a certain kind of fingerprint to their mm. to their spirits that no matter what you taste, no matter what it's made from, you can tell that it came from there. And you think that's it? Yeah. That, that sort of flavor? Mm -hmm. I've heard that mentioned before. I've never uh, figured out what that flavor is, but now that you point it out, I've yeah. never had a single malt anything like that. Right. I mean, to be fair, the only single malts I've ever had, with a few exceptions, are, are Scottish. Scottish, maybe some Irish. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, American single malt is kind of a niche category right now still. I mean, mm -hmm. folks want bourbon, people want rye. But uh, right. I really think some of the most creative, interesting, cool stuff is happening in single malt. There is a lot of flavor crammed into that, man. Mm-hmm. And I mean, this is bottled at cast strength, too, so... Is it? Wow. Yeah. What is it? It is 63.3. Oh, I would not have picked that. I yeah. would have picked maybe 58. Yeah. Maybe. It doesn't drink like, like it's that high. It does not. Yeah. And it is chill, but it is um, long-lasting, flavorful. Yeah. And again, 21 months old. That's amazing. Right. right. The it, climate here is bonkers. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's, that's interesting. I mean, hot, short time and hot weather and, and things like using small barrels can make really harsh, bad, off-flavored whiskey. It can. Yeah. But folks like Balcones, like Iron Root, Andalusia, uh, they're learning to deal with that climate and make mm. the best of it and how to take advantage of it to make a Texas style whiskey really shine. And the big sort of the, the big chewy, creamy, dark sugar mm -hmm. flavors along with the coffee and the it definitely has a creaminess to it. Yeah, there's crazy. there's always like just such a complexity and density of the flavor I feel like for for the balcony single malt. Yeah. Amazing. Nice. Yep. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. I will not be forgetting that. <laughs>
So uh, the next one we have here is the Andalusia Whiskey Company Striker. That's that hardwood smoked single malt that's oak, apple, and mesquite smoked. That's cool. So, and uh, the special version of this that was aged in uh, rum casks from another, near another nearby distillery, uh, Treaty Oak. So that is really interesting for us because, I mean, the people watching this video, that's what they want to do. They want to mess with things, they want to try different things. Mm -hmm. uh, they are definitely whiskey drinkers, but they're more than likely not exclusively whiskey drinkers, like sure. you know, a lot of whiskey drinkers are. Right. So that's really interesting. For and us. what's cool about it too is, I mean, these are two distilleries that are roughly an hour apart from one another, and they're right. collaborating back and forth. So and there's a lot of that going on in the Texas whiskey community. That's cool. That's cool to keep it local, man. Yeah. And use what you've got close to you. That's pretty cool. So again, this is still a single malt whiskey, just like the Balcones, but mm -hmm. you're going to find it to be entirely different, I think. So I have my own really specific, unique oh. tasting notes on this whiskey in particular, but I'm curious to see what you think first. That is a bit of an enigma to me, off the bat. It has something kind of orchardy about it. Not not the fruit, but kind of the... Um, like, like being surrounded by fruit wood trees? Yeah, yeah. and like like early morning though. Like dew, dew on the grass, dew on the leaves. Mm -hmm. Like uh, woodiness, but not, um, not barrel woodiness. Right, it has a much more fresh, delicate flavor than the, yeah. than the Balcones does. That's amazing. Right. The Balcones is all dark and intense and complex, and this is much more delicate. That is. Uh, almost, it's much more Speyside-ish. It's all, Yeah, it's much more Scotch-like, for sure. But at the same time, you do have that, you can, the smoke is much more um, subdued than I thought it was going to be. Exactly. It's delicate, but it's there. Yep, yep. And I think that's due to the blend. I've had some, uh, I've had some mesquite smoked American whiskeys like Del Bach out of Arizona. Uh, Cole Keegan is out of uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. They do okay. mesquite smoked single malt. But I think the blend that Andalusia does between uh, an oak, which brings a little vanilla character to it, the apple, of course, can be a little bit more fruity, and mesquite is the kind of most intense yeah, smoke. Yeah, right. But adding just a touch of each of those, I think, really gives it a nice, soft, delicate, but still present smoke character. But you can't put your finger on it. Yeah. It's not like smoke at no. any one time. Yeah. You know, it's not yeah. ash, it's not it's not um uh, like bacony. Nope. It's it's spread. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, if you go into it expecting Lafroy or expecting Ardbeg uh, type no. smoke, it's not that at yeah. all. Or even like just straight up barbecue smoke, it's mm -hmm. not there either. I think you'll find the barbecue smoke a little more on the taste than on the nose. Oh, yeah. As you exhale, yeah, mm -hmm. there it is. Yep. Salty, briny, iodiney, just a little bit mm -hmm. with the smoke. The thing that sticks out to me uh, about Andalusia's uh, Striker and, and some of their other single malts, because that's all they do. They do single okay. malt exclusively. They do uh, 100 proof on every bottle oh, wow. across the board. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a cool thing that they do. Do you know where that came from? Um, on the one hand, it's really uh, it's it's kind of a simple rule for them to just yeah. everything comes out at 100 proof. To think about it. All of our labels <laughs> say 100 proof. Yeah. You know that was kind of the unintended consequence uh, from from what they told me. But um, their master distiller Ty Phelps, when I was talking to him uh, about their whiskey a few weeks ago, he said, "I don't necessarily personally feel like 100 proof is exactly ideal, but it allows you to take it at full strength if you want, mm. add a little bit of water." If you want, he said, I, you know, I like it more in the 90s personally, so I'll add some water to a lot of our whiskeys, but uh, it leaves the choice up to you. Yeah, right. So. This is a complete 180 from everything else we've tasted so far. It's incredibly unique, and that's why I thought you might dig it. You know? It tastes like an American scotch. Yeah, <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. So that's... Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, um, as the smoke comes up, it almost feels like it's going to go peaty. Right, but then it, it takes a big hard right turn away from the the, um, the mossy, earthy sort of peat, and it yeah. winds up with wood smoke. Yep, and the thing that the thing that really sticks out to me uh, is, I believe it's lactones would be the right term for it. Interesting. Slightly uh, dairy type, just a little bit like malted milk, like in a, like in a candy that has some malted milk to it. Hmm. Lends it like just a slight soft. Oh yeah, taste. I see what you mean. Um, slightly proteiny. Mm -hmm. It's got like a roundness. Yeah. Yeah, I see exactly. that. Mixed with the kind of the the slight vanilla, but almost not. Right. It's not overwhelmingly vanilla. It doesn't no. have too much sweetness to it. E even with the rum cask finished, you'd expect 
yeah. a little bit more sweet. You know what's really funny is I get less rum off that. <laughs> and I do off, was it this one? No, uh, this okay. one. That's really weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we've been through Texas bourbon, two different Texas single malts with a completely different character. And now bring the non-whiskey to the table. Yeah, let's do it. So this is Balcones Rumble Cask Reserve. They have a, a expression that's available all the time that's just called Rumble. It's a lower proof, you know, so they pick their favorite Rumble barrels each year and put that out as a special release annually. That's and pretty cool. That's what this is. It's presented at 58.5%. Uh, uh, rumble is kind of rum-like, but it's not rum. Uh, it, it's, it's a weird one. It's uh, made from Texas wildflower honey, turbinado oh, sugar, wow. and mission figs. So Okay. So this is right up our alley. This is, yeah. This, this is, is the, cool. And it's cool to see craft distillers making this kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. And putting it out on the shelves. That's, yeah, it's dope. So I find this one to be really interesting. Uh, I've never had anything quite like it. So All right. I'm not sure. <laughs> the, cl the, the closest thing I can compare it to is rum, so you know that's why they call it rumble. Oh yeah, it's totally rummy. Mm -hmm. But there's no molasses in it. Yeah, not so much. It's more fruity. Yeah. Oh, that's glorious. It's kind of like a rum whiskey. Mm -hmm. Anybody that likes whiskey is gonna is gonna enjoy rumble. It's, I think. it's like whiskey with uh, a little bit of banana ester. Like a tiny little bit of rum funk, but not. And, I and then with that American sort of wood profile, I guess it is, mm -hmm. that's following up at the back end that mm -hmm. makes it really whiskey like. I think you'll be really surprised on the taste too. Oh, really? Is it different? It's different than the nose, I think, yeah. Hmm. Oh, it's way more rum like mm -hmm. than I was expecting. And that. And all the wood disappears. Yeah, no. The American sort of. This medicine. one's so much more woody, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it smells like a rum whiskey. It drinks like a smooth, chill rum, like not a Jamaican pot stilled rum right. in any way. Right. It's much more gentle than that, and and. Uh, yeah, with none of the big funk or the crazy esters or. And I'm shocked by the proof again on this one. Oh really? You, you, oh, let me guess. Let me guess. Oh, you shouldn't have said that. Because <laughs> I would have said. 58. Uh, sorry. I, no, I would have said 48. 48? No, yeah. You were right at 58. Oh, really? Actually, yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't drink like it's uh, that, that high ABV at all. You are so lying. He's not lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, I thought you might dig that one. It's that kinda, is cool, man. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, it's a, kind of the, the Texas oddball. Um, Spirit, you know, there's there's people doing lots of creative things like uh, still Austin later. We'll see they're doing a rye gin, which is unusual. They're doing these infused spirits and stuff. So there's creative things going on outside of, uh, you know, whiskey specifically in Texas. But uh, to me, this is kind of the, the coolest one. All right. Well, thank you very much, man. I yeah. appreciate that. Thank Absolutely. you for doing the definitions and a walkthrough of uh, some examples of Tesky, uh, Texas whiskey. Yes. Kind of. <laughs> Whiskey-ish. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was absolutely amazing. There's obviously really cool things happening here in Texas. Uh, the Texas Whiskey Trail is trying to push that. Yep. Texas and Whiskey Trail. All of these guys, uh, Balcones, Andalusia, Iron Road, and a bunch of others are members of Texas Whiskey Association as well, which is a, a group of grain-to-glass distilleries here in Texas that um, are promoting authentically made uh, Texas whiskey that's actually produced here in the state by Texas people. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So if you do get a chance to come and visit guys, check the Whiskey Trail out, uh, the Whiskey Association out, and definitely get to some of these places. If you can't do that, look for them on shelves. Yeah. Where and uh, if you can, near you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out. I had an absolute blast. Thank you Josh yeah. for coming and helping out, and thank you for bringing delicious, delicious <laughs> drinks for us to taste as well. Of course, man. Yeah. My pleasure. <laughs> so if you like the video, guys, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you really like the video and you want to help the channel out, there's a couple of things you can do. Number one is share this video with anyone else you think might like it. Number two is you can check the merch out down below the video in the bar if you're in America 
or down the uh, comment section, uh, sorry, no, not the comment section, the description, I'll leave a link there as well for merch. And the last thing you can do is if you're really finding value in these videos, go over to my Patreon page, there's a link down below, and uh, yeah, <laughs> check it out, and if you find value in that, sign up there as well. Alright guys, thanks heaps, keep on chasing the craft, see you next time. Cheers.